this year's Oceania Football Confederation's Under-17 Women's Championship brings us to the beautiful tropical island of Rarotonga for its qualifier. As we explore this tropical paradise, we are welcomed with the warmth of the famous Cook Island greeting. I say on behalf of our people and our government as well, that it is an honour to be the host for these two very important tournaments. It is an, an avenue for, for our youth to, let's say, get out of all the naughty things that they do and get into something more structured and sports, uh, through sports, sports thus offer uh, some structure to one's uh, upbringing or to one's life. perfect opportunity for our youth to see what is available you know, out there in the sports arena. As you're probably aware, we don't get this many opportunity for our athletes on the island, so it, it is an honour and a privilege to have uh, OFC and CIFA be part of this programme and the host as well. The region's best and upcoming female talents were treated to a warm Cook Islands welcome hosted by the Cook Islands Football Association at the Islander Hotel. It's beautiful because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, hot, 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 Women's football is a fast-growing sport around the globe. In the last 10 years, FIFA have invested a lot of resource into women's football. And today, around 30 million women play football. In order to qualify to play in the World Cup, all your girls will have to deal with our girls representing the Cook Islands. So it's going to be a hard task for all the new teams to win this competition here in Cook Islands because you're going to have to deal with our girls representing our country. Winning is not everything. It's the only thing. <laughs> okay, so on that note, I'd like to declare the Under-17s uh, Women's Tournament here in the Cook Islands for 2016 officially open. Thank you. It's been really nice. The food is good. My favourite was the potato salad, minus. <laughs> I stress it. <laughs> First match it will be New Zealand and it will be kind of a tough game. Really tough. 
so I'm quite excited. As our teams prepared to kickstart the tournament, we caught up with some of their coaches. Gareth, you've been here a couple of days now. How have you found the Cook Islands so far? Oh, it's a beautiful place. Uh, I was lucky enough to come here last year for holiday, so I understand a little bit of the lay of the land, but the girls, are they love it. The uh, temperature's a little bit hotter than normal, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to keep them focused on football where they, it's a tropical resort, so, uh, but uh, we're doing well. We're here to win. We're here to win five games, so uh, a good performance will go a long way to winning, um, and that's, that's our mindset. So we've probably spent the last just over a year and a bit identifying uh, this group of 19. Um, they all, or 18 of them, come from New Zealand, one from Canada. Uh, they all play school football. Uh, they all play for the federations, so we've been able to work with them in various different environments over the last 18 months. Uh, super talented side. Uh, we have a couple born in 2001, so they're eligible for the next under 17. So we've identify them as high flyers if you wish of their cycle and, and here's an opportunity to, to bring them into the environment and, and uh, hopefully you know be sustainable for the future as well. Nadia this is your first big tournament as coach of a national team. How are you feeling about the preparations that you've done and the team you've put together? Um, I'm pretty much confident with the team and the way they respond to all the trainings from the beginning. So yeah, um, looking forward for it. Do it. Put him back to it. How have you found the hospitality of the Cook Islanders? Uh, awesome, awesome. Like all other Pacific Islands, we share the common, we share like a common culture, the friendliness particularly. Yeah. Good island, great island. We are, we will be a good welcome for from uh, all the population. And we are very, we enjoy our staying from the start. So now it's all about the girls. It's her who will be, who will be on the field. But we are confident, and uh, I think uh, the first match will be uh, a good match. Can come out and support the girls. Though. That would be a big help. And the girls are just looking forward to uh, play their first game at home. New Caledonia and New Zealand both made winning starts in Group A as the championship kicked off. Given the chance to open the tournament, New Caledonia were impressive with a 5-0 victory over Tonga, dominating proceedings and never looking in much doubt. Uh, it feels good. <laughs> it was very hard. Uh, I think about the, the weather and uh, it was very hot. We had to do uh, what we expect, our playing style. I think we do well. I think it, it, it was the first game we, we searched the victory. Goalkeeper Melia Kolo was outstanding, repeatedly coming off her line to clean up dangerous situations. First of all, uh, credit to Matthews and the New Caledonian girls. Uh, like you said, there were some few moments during the game, but uh, we just didn't get that finishing touch. But uh, I think that is something that we will have to take in to build up for our Samoan game. In the second match of the day, New Zealand took their first step towards defending their title, disposing of newcomers Samoa 11-0. A hat-trick each for Jackie Hand and Hannah Blake set Gareth Turnbull's side up for big victory, which propels them to the top of Group A on goal difference. Each goal is individually good, so I don't know, I guess all of them. Delays in team travel meant kickoff times for both Pool B matches were rescheduled for a late start.
Fiji marked the first ever OFC Under-17 Women's Championship match with a 3-0 victory over Cook Islands. while Papua New Guinea produced a comprehensive 7-1 route of Vanuatu on the first day of Group B action. Despite their inexperienced squad, Fiji looked completely in control for the majority of their clash with the host nation dominating ball possession. Cook Islands started the second 45 minutes playing a more positive style and were able to dominate proceedings for a short period forcing a couple of saves from Francine Lockington in goal. The second match was played under lights and started at a blistering pace. Two minutes into the game, Papua New Guinea sent the ball into the back of the net with a powerful shot under Vanuatu keeper Ruth Tate. Despite Vanuatu visiting the attacking end a number of times, it was Papua New Guinea who found goal again and again. And again. to penalty a minute into added time was converted by Anigere and at least restored some pride in Joel Rarua's side. We finally here for the tournament. Uh, we nearly missed the tournament due to visa issues but we are here now and uh, to get the first win is really good for the girls and uh, not having to rest the last couple of days I would say. Um, for me it was a little bit um, nervous for the girls because they didn't have a good rest but to get this first win it was exciting and um, I think the girls will take it from there on. New Zealand maintained their spot at the top of Group A with a commanding 12-0 victory over New Caledonia while Tonga tasted their very first victory at the competition, getting up for a 4-1 victory over Samoa. Technically, it was okay, but I think it's all come down to the heart. Because yeah, uh, we got a little something going on right there with the Samoans, and uh, it's always uh, good to see that the uh, island style of play. And in the end, uh, well, I'd like to thank uh, Nadia and his girls. They really put up a good fight back there. Papua New Guinea maintained their perfect record with a hard-fought 2-1 win over Cook Islands. We had to work really hard this afternoon. Um, the Cook Islands played really well this afternoon. They had uh, really good defence and I was expecting that. So for us to come out winners this afternoon, I'm, I'm so happy for the girls while Vanuatu kept themselves firmly in the race for a semi-final spot on match day four with a convincing 3-2 win over Fiji. After we get defeated with a heavy score from the last game, I uh, tried to get my players recovered to get sure we, we did something different from the previous game. And uh, this game was really hard for me, uh, defeat, uh, playing against the Fijian team. The, physically, they were tall. They had uh, good physical uh, strength, uh, but we were just working on more on uh, their technical to make sure we keep the ball down and try to keep our games to make sure we had something at the end of the game. Heading into the final day of group play, every team had a mathematical chance of qualifying through, making a tense afternoon of games which saw two groups play simultaneously at Takitimu School and the SIF Academy in Matavera. In Group A, New Zealand and New Caledonia advanced to the semi-finals without a problem, both claiming comfortable victories. New Zealand 13-0 over Tonga, yeah, pleased to get the result, uh, pleased to get a few more goals and, and a few other people into goal scoring form which uh, really completes that part of the, our puzzle. And 5-0 for New Caledonia over Samoa. The, the score don't, uh, don't show 
the the game because it was pretty hard for us. Samoa do put pressure. And we are in difficulty with with their playing style. Group B wasn't so straightforward as host nations the Cook Islands sprang the surprise of the tournament to date by defeating Vanuatu 5-1. Uh, we came out today uh, against Vanuatu and we should have played uh, the Fiji game exactly like that, but unfortunately we lost that one, but the result today was good for the girls. Uh, that result knocked Vanuatu out of the semi-final contention and opened the door for Fiji to qualify with their two-all draw against Papua New Guinea. So we are proud of our achievement that we have reached the semi-finals. That was what I had aimed for, we had aimed for, sorry, when we left Fiji, that we want to have a top four finish. In 2005, the first seminar we had here in the Cook Islands, the second seminar was in 2013, and I have the feeling that we have made a lot of progress. Once upon a time, the place of a woman was considered to be in the kitchen, and it wasn't long ago when I was a young, uh, a young person, uh, my mother's place was considered to be in the kitchen and in the house, not on the sporting field. But all of that has changed here in the Cook Islands. And it's only for the good FIFA has opened up doors for our women folk and opportunities have been opened to our women folk, uh, I believe, right, uh, right across the globe. And uh, I think it is an honour for myself and for the government of the Cook Islands and the people of the Cook Islands to be hosting uh, this seminar. to say thank you for everything that FIFA has done for us. Thank you for encouraging women in sports. And on that note, may I officially open the FIFA OFC Women's Football Development Seminar here in the Cook Islands, officially open. happening today is a really exciting project because we are hosting the FIFA NOFC Women's Football Development Seminar. It's the third time that we do such an event in the region. We're bringing together all the member associations and we will be discussing the challenges, the main projects, the vision for women's football and hopefully uh, create something that we can all share and work for and look forward to the next four years. One benefit I can see is that um, we were able as Cook Islanders and as host country for the tournament to showcase how football is here and how far we've come since 2005. The women players is not anymore in the kitchen. We want to be out there and we want to lead. And this is one of the things that FIFA is actually encouraging women to do. Take on the stage and not only play but also lead in football. And we do hope that you take that voice also and become ambassadors of this possibility. The biggest change I'd like to see for women's football in the region, um, I'd like to hear, see more of a gender balance in the executive committees and, and also in the federation as a whole. Of course it has to be on merit and I believe there are potential women out there who are involved in women's football that, that can also do the same job as men. No focus is to uh, decentralize the football, uh, women's football into the other uh, aim is, and is to take the football to the doorsteps and to allow the participation of uh, girls and women, young women, to get involved in the game and uh, to participate and uh, use the game as one of the uh, development tools. The biggest change in the in the region would be a lot of girls playing football, and and also not only developing uh, the the girls, we also develop the technical team, meaning uh, the coaches and also the the referees, uh, women referees, so they can have chances to the to take to take the game on at the world stage. Um, so far, we have some, but not not enough. We can contribute more to FIFA, and also I would like to see. Um, a lot of women involved in coaching their national teams. To know more about the 
funding programs for women's football from FIFA and to be able to engage that to develop um, women's football back at home. In the islands we take football lightly and we take it as social uh, games and not very competitive but um, in future I would like to see a lot of competition competing at um, all levels um, in, the, in the region and uh, if there is a way and there is a will we can go internationally and compete. I would like also to take a moment to congratulate all the teams participating in the under 17 qualifiers from the OFC and in particular those that have been successful in the competition and especially the president of the Cook Island Football Association for having a great daughter that scored many goals yesterday. So congratulations. We hope that this inspires you even more to support women's football here in the Cook Islands and in the region. In 2002, only four teams took part in the Women's Under-17 Oceania Championship. Today, as we all know, there are eight teams participating in the tournament to qualify for birth at the Under-17 FIFA World Cup to be held in Jordan later on in the year. New Zealand and Papua New Guinea met in the final, both unbeaten, but their semi-final experiences couldn't have been more different. New Zealand cruised through with a 11-0 drubbing of Fiji at the Seafair Academy, while later that day, Papua New Guinea had to wait until the last minute of the play to secure a 2-1 win over New Caledonia. Despite coming up against a determined and capable Papua New Guinea side, New Zealand have booked their spot at the 2016 FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup Jordan in style after a convincing 8-0 victory over Papua New Guinea. Uh, sounds amazing, feels excellent. It's you know, just another you know, the step completed until, uh, in our journey. So yeah, really, really happy for the girls. Fantastic group and, and they uh, deserve every accolade they get today for sure. Uh, I was only given like four weeks of training and uh, even uh, myself I can't believe that I mastered those elements and the techniques uh, within those four weeks and it's got me this and I'm so proud of myself and my goalkeeper coach which is uh, back in Rarotonga in the hotel. It was pretty good but more importantly it was good to get the win and all about my teammates so yeah just team game so that's how it goes. Pretty honoured, I eh? just so upset, wasn't really expecting it, but um, oh, it's just a team effort, I just thank you for a team I've been put in, and yeah, I'm just glad I could do them, do them proud, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah.